Welcome to the weather forecast for the week beginning Wednesday, September 30th. I'm Chief Meteorologist John Ensworth for Longmont Public Media. We start out with a full moon on Friday. Ooh, spooky. And what's kind of neat is, depending on you know, time zone, international dateline, and little things like that, um, we, in many places, get another full moon off on Halloween. So at the very end of the month, if uh, you get two full moons in one month, that's sort of colloquially called a blue moon. So something happens once in a blue moon will happen for some people in October. Taking a look at drought, not much has changed from the previous week. If you take a look at areas around Colorado Springs, you see they got a little bit of rainfall relief down there. But the rest of the state has stayed largely unchanged with extreme drought over much of the western part of the state. Looking across the nation, eastern U.S. doing fine, western U.S. having uh, the problems. The areas outlined in black have more of the long-term drought uh, problems settling in, and that includes most of Colorado. Over the last seven days, rainfall has been very light, uh, less than a tenth of an inch, few spots close to a quarter inch out on the plains, but very light uh, showers at all. And of course looking at smoke, we have this gigantic trough that we'll look at in the upper air map in a moment over the eastern U.S. as bringing very clean air from the Arctic region and polar region down into the nation. Uh, the ridge is building in the west coast and so air flow has become stagnant again underneath that high and the ridge. So the smoke is beginning to pool up there. Locally, the Cameron Peak Fire uh, just on Tuesday night seems to have flared up, turned the moon red. Uh, we have that plume going right over us. So this is probably un undone, underdone. There's more smoke coming in. Take a look at Thursday morning. Some of this smoke is starting to leak out of the ridge coming down the northwest flow and our local fires may be doing a little bit more as well. So here's that giant west coast ridge. It's been around for months. It's been the cause of the fires and the extreme heat. Uh, Phoenix, I guess, has had its second largest number of 100 degree plus days. Of course, we are setting new record for the number of 90 degree plus days. But with a trough here of the Midwest and East, we are getting due north flow on Tuesday. By Thursday noon, the high is going to migrate from Oregon down into Nevada. Get a little more, bit of a tilt, a little more Northwest flow here, which means any little ripple coming along will be able to bring in a weak cool front, knocking off 10 degrees or so from our previous day high. Had to find a different uh, GFS ensemble. Uh, the one that I go to at Weather 5280 seems to have broken uh, about half a week ago. So our low, uh, highs and lows, normals, drop from 72 to 69 over the next 10 days. And for lows 42 down to 40. So our lows are about to go normally into the 30s but you can see the temperatures are still remaining above normal throughout this period. Um, not extreme 90s, but definitely some heat still. That's because the ridge isn't that far away. And rain is nothing. These are clouds down here. Not smoke, just normal clouds. If you look way out at Sunday, you'll see the high, which is around Oregon and to Nevada, has migrated down to southern Arizona. And the ridge axis itself has moved from the west coast over to Utah, Wyoming. So it's getting closer. We'll see the temperatures rising again. Still this giant trough is hanging on over the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley, Mississippi Valley. Over the next 10 days, the GFS doesn't give us anything. I guess I see like a little blockiness here of under... 0 0.05 inches in the foothills, but it's so hard to see. It's not much. So looking over the next seven days, our first cool front comes in Wednesday night, cooling us into the 60s. 
We rebound close to 80 on Friday, another cold front for Friday night, knocks us down for Saturday. We're still kind of cool Sunday, and we see 80s come back as that ridge starts to inch towards our state again. And we're normal high down at 70, so this is 12 degrees or so above normal. Lows at night in the 30s and 40s, really almost a neg neg negligible, if I could speak, uh, chance of rain over this time. Before we go, let's take a look at the ENSO, the El Nino Southern Oscillation. And this is the sea surface temperature anomaly. So this is how unusually cool for the blues or unusually warm for the reds and oranges the Pacific is. Give you some landmarks here. Here is Mexico, Central America, and South America over here. This is Australia and this... Uh, lower left and this is the equator going right down the middle and this is a classic La Nina signature when you get the cold water here it means that the easterly winds at the equator are blowing a little stronger than normal creating more upwelling on this side of the ocean moving all the warm water over to this side of the ocean taking a look at October 2019 up through September We've gone from abnormally warm to abnormally cool, so we're definitely settling into a La Nina event. And the temperature probabilities going through the end of the year, this is October, November, December, with La Nina settling in and the other sea surface temperature indices has above normal temperatures for the Rocky Mountains and much of the nation. For precipitation below normal for the southern states and some above normal in the Pacific Northwest. From our local news, you take a look at longmontleader.com. Also, more frequent weather updates there. I've been Chief Meteorologist John Innsworth for Longmont Public Media. Keep looking up.